Praise be to Jesus. Hi everyone, Charles here with you. These are your Catholic news briefs for Monday afternoon, October 8, 2018. The Vatican's leading sex abuse expert says Pope Francis' summit in February with global church leaders on preventing abuse should also address holding bishops accountable when they fail to protect their flocks from pedophile priests. Archbishop Charles Secluna told the news conference Monday that there is a great expectation for more accountability from Catholic faithful worldwide and that the summit is the appropriate venue to discuss it. Secluna, who for a decade was the Vatican sex crimes prosecutor, also said the Vatican should consider whether sexual abuse of adults by a people in positions of power could be prosecuted in the same stringent way that it prosecutes sexual abuse of minors. And from another source, um, I assume from the same statement by him, but it's a little bit different take on it. Archbishop Charles J. Secluna of Malta said that while the Youth Synod is not ignoring the sexual abuse crisis, Catholics looking for thorough answers should wait for a February 29th, February 2019 meeting of bishops. He also commented on the effectiveness of Pope Francis's voice on the abuse issue, saying to those losing trust in the pontiff's handling of abuse cases, give him time. Secluna told journalists October 8th that while the Synod Fathers will address the fact that young people have been affected by clergy sexual abuse, the Synod is about so many other aspects of the life of young people. The question of sexual abuse should be considered, but I don't see any answers to these important questions from this Synod, he said. Instead, pointing to a meeting Pope Francis called with the presidents of the world's bishops' conferences at which the question will be discussed at length. Polish activists met with opposition lawmakers Monday to demand criminal punishment for Catholic priests convicted of sexually abusing children and extending the stature of limitations for prosecutions. The meeting brought the lawmakers together with psychologists, lawyers, and the president of a foundation that represents people who say they were sexually abused by priests in Poland. The activists are seeking greater sensitivity to the issue of sex abuse in the Catholic Church. Have No Fear Foundation, President Marek Lasinski called for an independent commission to assess the scale of clergy sex abuse and for the wavering of the stature of limitations so suspects can be put on trial. Under Polish law, criminal charges and child sex abuse cases cannot be brought to court after the alleged victim turns 30. Since everyone doesn't see every video, I'm going to post this story again, but from another source, because it's an important story. The Vatican's Prefect for the Congregation of Bishops has confirmed that, in response to Theodore McCarrick's serial sexual predation of young men and boys, Pope Benedict XVI imposed punitive measures against the former Washington, D.C. Cardinal and that Pope Francis lifted them. In an open letter published Sunday, Cardinal Mark Ouellette slammed Vatican whistleblower Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano uh, claims of sex abuse cover-up as a blasphemous attack on Francis. To accuse Pope Francis of having covered with full knowledge of the facts this alleged predator and therefore of being an accomplice of the corruption that is spreading in the church is incredible, he said. Some observers are suggesting Francis is responding to Archbishop Vigano's allegations vicariously through Ouellette, 
noting that, as the Cardinal himself indicated, his letter was published with due pontifical permission, intended as a defense of the Pope, Willette's letter is noteworthy for what it revealed about the Pope's handling of McCarrick. Though asserting the measures were improperly termed sanctions, as Vigano described them, Cardinal Willette corroborated the former papal nuncio's assertion that McCarrick was under penalty, banned from traveling and making public appearances by order of Pope Benedict. He also conceded Pope Francis invalidated them in trying to defend Francis. Willette did not deny that Archbishop Vigano alerted the Pope to McCarrick's history of sexual assault on June 23, 2013. Instead, he suggested, Francis was bothered, overwhelmed with information on that particular day, and that he was likely unimpressed by the McCarrick disclosure. I imagine the enormous amount of verbal and written information he had to gather on that occasion about many people and situations. I strongly doubt that McCarrick interested him to the extent that you believe, since he was an Archbishop uh, Emeritus of 82 years and seven years without a post. Willett suggested he is at a loss to explain McCarrick's rise to the rank of cardinal considering his decades of sexual predation. Well, we'll end on a more hopeful note here. About 40,000 young people gathered Saturday at the National Stadium in Warsaw to pray for the Synod of Bishops taking place in Rome this month. The 12-hour gathering on October 6 included prayer, conferences, and testimonies, as well as concerts and artistic shows, according to a release from the Polish Bishops' Conference. And that's your Catholic news for right now. Uh, enjoy your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.